it's fair to say the springs were tired, but I didn't realize that they were broken. That one actually had two pieces. Um, and I'm thinking that all has to do with this. I'm thinking this hitch is involved in the story of those broken springs. All right, hello. So today is a great day in January. It's 60 degrees here in Baltimore, or outside of Baltimore. So we try to make most of it, get some work done. Uh, my name is Christian Toth with Coach Set Motorworks. And this is my 1985 W126 Mercedes 300 SD. So it's a diesel, if you're, a turbo diesel, if you're not familiar with those. Um, gets about 28 miles per gallon, but which is great. But uh, as you can see, we're a little low in the rear. Um, so I mentioned this in my other video. Uh, this was owned by an older gentleman who had a wheelchair. And he had a wheelchair in a uh, wheelchair lift in the back of this here. So you can see where the bracket is. Um, and obviously with all that tension, you're going to put a lot of stress on the back end of the car. And you can see the front's pretty high. So let's do a quick measurement on what the rear looks like. All right, so right now, I go to the wheel well. I apologize for the wind noise. It is at 25 and a half inches high. So I've been looking around on YouTube and there's some videos uh, replacing the rear springs a lot more on the front actually. But um, I guess, you know, because the heavy diesel engine, but in my case, it's an issue with the rear because the rears were all the stress had been with the previous owner. So uh, I picked up some new Bills, Bilzentine, or Bilstein, I always get confused on how to say that, um, from Rock Auto, they're about 40 bucks a piece, um, which isn't bad, I thought that was pretty reasonable. Uh, and we'll take a look under there, actually the springs look pretty new, and so do the shocks. So uh, I think it's just been put through its paces a little earlier than expected lifespan. Uh, so we're going to go ahead, I have the front wheels chalked, we're going to go ahead and lift up the rear and start taking the wheels off. And I got a couple spring compressing tools, hopefully I, I stacked my deck having two here. Neither one are, is that specific Mercedes spring compressing tool, which is usually necessary on the front because the coils are so, um, so skinny. I don't know if you can see, you can see back there. So I'm going to give it a shot. Um, like I said, we, well, you know what, we can go over what I'm going to use here. So this is one of those free spring compressing tools you get. I got mine at Pep Boys. Um, what sucks about those is you got to tighten each side of the spring and they can get a little dangerous. Um, otherwise, this one here, you, you put it through the center of the spring and you just tighten it at one point so it compresses evenly, which I would think would be more safer. So uh, let's get this jacked up and put some uh, jack stands under it and get going. Okay, so the first thing we have to do is take out the shocks, which are in, in the middle of the spring. Let's see if I can get you a shot here. Here we go. So, since they are inside, we have to take out the rear here. Now, um, normally there will be screws Pull the seatbelt away, right down here. Mine are obviously missing them, so <laughs> let's go ahead and just take that out. All right, so I gotta remove this guy. All right, it's kind of gross. All right, so you can see here. See back here. Usually there's a plate or cover that goes on this, but. If there's screws missing, why would there be the cover there? So I'm gonna go ahead and spray this down with some WD-40 to make it easier to get off. And that'll remove the top bolt on either shock mount on both sides. All right, so it's a 17 millimeter nut. Uh, it's gonna spin, so I'm gonna have to hold that top.
So, got the wheels off. And this sway bar actually looks, and considering everything else in the car, this looks pretty new. Um, so I wonder if that's been replaced. I've been hitting these bolts with some uh, PB Blast the past couple days. Some of the videos I've seen, like I said, they haven't been very good, but they uh, talk about needing to remove this. But I'm wondering if I can just get away with using my spring compressing tool. Um, so that is the shock. And to undo it, you gotta undo the bolts that are there. So I've been I've been hitting that with also with PB Blaster also. So let's give it a shot. And get to it. Yeah, so as you can see, I can't get this out. This would be a lot easier to do if I was on a lift. So what I think I need to do is put that wheel back on on that side. Jack from here. Jack it up enough that I can drop this all the way out. So I'm going to go put that wheel on and we'll be back. Alright, so I did get it out. Uh, sorry, I should have got on video. I thought it would be harder, but... So basically, as you can see, I just jacked up this side right here and got that. And what I think I'm going to do actually is install my spring compressor with the spring under load. So meaning I won't have to crank it up to get it out. I can, you know, just hold the compression that it is. That way, um, when I let my A-arm down, the spring will stay compressed. This is my spring tool. So the idea is I unscrew this, two pieces, put them inside the spring, and then screw the rod in from underneath. So I'm going to try to do that here, and I uh, might cut this part out, but we'll see if you can see it. Alrighty. Well, the spring is loose. Let's see. Now this is the dangerous part. I'm going to actually put my gloves on, whatever that might do. Alright, well just a quick update, so I'm still struggling to get this out. I'm going to try to undo this to see if this will drop the arm anymore. Um, so I almost have it out as you can see, but there was a piece missing. So I think I know why I was sagging so bad in the back. Which is crazy because the spring's not even looking in bad shape. Um, and the shock looks pretty new also, so, I don't know, but I'm going to try to get this out, I'm trying to undo that bolt, I'll let you know what I find All out. Alright, so I got it out, this is that little rubber bushing, I guess you'd call it. it, goes at the top, and as you can see these springs are painted pretty nicely, but I did say it sat under a tree for a couple years, so I think... When it was sitting, obviously, the top and bottom. All right, that's the bottom. The bottom rusted out pretty bad. So I'm going to carefully undo this contraption. And I'm going to put my new spring and cinch it down to this as well. And hopefully get it back in here. Clean this stuff out. So I did end up, so I thought I needed to take this off. Clearly I didn't because it's not even under any load. So um, I ended up snapping it. So I guess I got to replace that. But uh, hopefully this is a lesson learned for you guys so you don't make the same mistake as me. All right, I'm going to undo this. down I'm gonna see if this is enough um, if it's squished together enough see if I can get it to fit access isn't really good, that good so I'll leave you here but I'll bring you back in when I get it. all right so I didn't get it in so I'm actually gonna to try to adjust this bring this maybe one step higher 
All right, so I actually did a lot of trial and error um, off camera, but what you basically need to do is you need to scrunch those springs until they're like, I think I got it down to like 11 and a half or 11 and a quarter inches. Um, and then that will allow you to get them in. So I did get them in. Uh, it's not tricky and I can definitely tell you probably getting, probably getting the Mercedes tool uh, would make it a little easier. But if you're in a pinch, and you know you want to uh, want to get it done just that day. Uh, it's proof that you can get the spring in. So I only got one in. Um, going to go ahead and put this shock back up. Not bolt the top, and uh, actually I can. It's independent rear suspension. So I'm going to go ahead and bolt that in. Check my time. Make sure that I'm still going to have time here to work. Um, but I'll get you back when I got them both on. All right. So last thing I got to do is okay. So I already I tightened that nut. There's one on either side here, and then this is that cover I was telling you about to cover that shock absorber access. All right, that just kind of goes over like this, but I'll probably vacuum that out. All right. So, looks pretty good. Let's get a measurement on it. So we were at 25 and a half before. So we were at 27 and a half. So we picked up two inches. That's pretty good. That's, that's noticeable. So that's awesome. And again, to recap, that was my issue. It's fair to say the springs were tired, but I didn't realize that they were broken. That one actually had two pieces. Um, and I'm thinking that all has to do with this. I'm thinking this hitch is involved in the story of those broken springs. But thanks again for joining me. Um, oh, you know what? I do need to show you one thing. Um, so before I sign off here real quick, I wanted to mention something. So this is the spring compressing tool that I bought at Pet Boys. It's 948012 is the power belt part number and it's a spring compressor. But if you notice, I actually cut off a couple pieces. So when I was trying to get my spring in, these were just sticking out way too far and I never needed something that long. So I just sliced them off. Um, I have a feeling you'll probably need to do the same. But in case you were, you know, putting those springs in you're fighting with it I didn't want to uh, I didn't want you to keep struggling so again this is Christian Toth with Coach Stop Motor Works but if you enjoy this video if you could uh, throw me a like or uh, click on that subscribe button I'd appreciate it let me know that you guys actually enjoyed my content and that you wanted me to make more videos so on that note I appreciate you stopping by Again, this is the $550 commuter Mercedes named ARP. Thank you. Bye.